Well, this is unexpected. I wasn't planning to use Flashback Express, but whatever. Dungeons of Dreadmoor, Conquest of the Wizardlands. I'm having to record it with like the uh, Flashback Express because apparently Fraps and D3D Gear isn't working for me, so whatever. Alright, so this is a game, a Rolex game, that's famous for being on Steam. Famous for being really good, with very shitty humor and stuff. Let's see what it's all about. Alright, so you got the turtles here, let's just let's see what they're all about. So movement, learn how to move your character around. Combat, beat every ever-loving poop out Diggle. Combat skills, learn how to solve the real steel with our easy home study course. Food! Food to wonder food. Item use. Let's drop some acid together. And equipment maintenance. Do not wear boots on your head. After all, where would you put traffic cone? You will use the default key bindings and all loot will be turned off while you are learning about the horrors that wait you in a dungeon. Don't worry. You can take all your customizations with you at the end of the school day. Welcome to Dungeons of Dreadmoor. We've got a lot to cover today, so let's get started. The object of Dungeons of Dreadmoor is not necessarily to beat the game. Beating the game is very, very, very hard. Instead, go into the game seeing if you can do just a little bit better than you did last time. Eventually you will win. First, however, the Hero Certification Board requires us to explain to you how to play the game so that you can die appropriately at the hands of enemies. First, let's learn how to move a hero. Moving to dungeon in Dungeons of Dreadmoor is easy. The WASD keys on the keyboard will move your hero up, left, down, and right respectively. Try walking over to the first lever and flipping it. To activate an option in Dungeons & Dreadmoor, more, simply click on it. So this is very much, you know, a keyboard and, you know, a mouse driven game. And as you can see, it's basically like, you know, a cardinal type of game as you can see. You don't have like, you know, the ability to move in diagonal directions, you move in the cardinal directions. It's very good. The door of an educational grate has opened, and you may now proceed to the very small watery maze section of the tutorial. If you don't want to use the keyboard, you can also click on the floor. Your hero will then move to the appropriate square. Try using the mouse to move the, your way through the watery maze below. Note that you can just click on an object like the lever to move directly to it. So I can move like with the mouse keys. Well done, this completes the first tutorial. Alright, so next tutorial. Every time you move or perform an action doesn't have done more, you and the monsters alternate taking turns. You move, then they move, then you can move, etc, etc, etc. To demonstrate this principle, let's kill something. This little fellow here is a tutorial diggle. One of the many diggles that you will encounter. Let's kill it. Quick. To attack a monster, simply move next to it, either with the WASD buttons or with the mouse, and click on to attack. Get back here. To the slaughter! Apparently you don't have the ability to like, you know, uh, move into stuff like in, you know, other roguelikes where like basically you can bump attack, but whatever. Well, you sure beat it into a blight pulp, congratulations. No man ever became a great warrior by merely clicking on his enemy. You must apply common skills and magic if you are wish to survive a dungeon. This level contains four mighty digger warriors. Look at them thirsting for your blood. If you simply charge in and try clicking on them, you will get slired. Fortunately, there is an easier way. In your skill belt on the right hand side of the screen, you will have access to a skill. The skill can, uh, you can access depends on your initial career choices that you make at the start of the game. In this case, you are a mighty axe wielder, and as such, you have access to the mighty Norwegian Axe Endo. Click on the Axe Endo icon to equip it. So is this it right here? Excellent, now you can kill some diggles. Notice how the Axe Endo icon now appears in a small gold box at the bottom of the screen? 
This means that it is active, and you can execute it by right-clicking on the uh, square with your mouse. Move up to the diggle, hold down right-click to see the squares that you can target. Release right-click to fire the Xeno. Now go kill that diggle. Well, peace up here. I guess these are all the tar tar squares can target with the skill. So I basically right click right now, I'm holding it down, I can basically see all around myself. You do so you do your Viking ancestors proud. Notice that some numbers have now appeared on top of the skill and how it appears to be disabled. This is because your skill has a cooldown period, and you must wait before you can use it again. We've opened up a chamber to the Diggle's Nest. You can hit space to pass your turn, and they will advance on your position. Wait for them to have you surrounded, then attack with your Norwegian Xendo. And yeah, there's a dead, dead Diggle here. So, Diggle, animal, is, it is dead. A strange little bird thing that tunnels through the walls with its old, rubbery, nasal appliances. Well, that's fun. All right, I am surrounded. Let's take him on. All right, well, let's just kill him. Critical hit. Hey, critical hit. So this completes the combat ability section of the tutorial. Combat abilities do different things. Try them and fight them out. Well, that's that part. Let's go to the next tutorial. Let's start by killing a Diggle. You should you should be an old hat at this by now. Oh, he dodged. Look how well you've done at killing the Diggles. There's blood everywhere. Bless your little heart. You may have noticed at this point that your health is low. Health is represented by the red bar at the bottom of the screen. If your health falls to zero, you will die. This ends the current game. You can regain health in a few ways. First, you can simply wait, either by moving around the dungeon or by hitting space. This waits a turn. Your hero will regain health slowly on his own. If your hero eats food, he will regain health more quickly. One point of health every turn. We've left some in the dungeon for you. Go pick it up and then eat it. To eat food, pick it up, drop it in your belt, then press right click to eat it. Oh yeah, he has some gold. Okay, we'll put this right here. And I guess we'll eat it. Now, go kill the other diggle. Hey, look at that, we actually got a well-fed buff, so... That's cool. So, it's worth knowing that if you're moving around like our monsters, apparently it will actually make it so that, you know, you keep moving regardless of where you want to or not. Something to keep in mind. So, tutorial complete, next tutorial. One of the fun things about Dungeon of Dremor is that you will never ever, uh, you never know what items will do. You are encouraged to learn by experimentation, death, and starting a new game. Press I to open your inventory, or click on the inventory button. This is your backpack, you can store items in it. Clicking the inventory button again or pressing I will close it. You can also close it by hitting the little X, the gold X. You can also drag the backpack around by clicking the top of it and dragging it to where you want to move it. Try picking up that potion of Aqua Rouge and putting it in your inventory. Now try right clicking on the potion to drink it. He has a burns for your body, propelling you from this world onto the next tutorial. Okay, so killing myself. Always fun. While journeying through the dungeon, you may encounter a variety of weapons and armor. Many of these weapons and armor are better than what you start off with, and a key to success is upgrading your equipment wherever possible. 
Next to you is a mace. Pick it up. Now that you have a mace, we need to put it in your equipment. You can open up the character panel by pressing C, or by clicking the character button on the, on the screen of your mouse. This is your character panel, where you can see your character's attributes and you can also equip weapons and armor. You can also equip weapons and armor by depositing them in the appropriate slot. On the bottom of the panel, you can see your statistics. You have two types of statistics, primary attributes and secondary attributes. Primary attributes, burliness, sagacy, cadenish, nimbleness, stubbornness, and savvy do not directly affect your performance. They are, however, used to calculate your secondary statistics. For instance, your counterattack percentage is calculated from your nimbleness and your cadenishness. Can Don't you really love this, uh, this game involves like lovely little words in it? Your secondary attributes include all sorts of stuff. Run the mouse cursor over any attribute to see what it does. That said, you don't really need to know what everything does. Simply understand that the higher numbers in the panel are better numbers. You want the things to go up, not down. Now, equip the days by depositing in the appropriate slot. Remove the iron mace from your per equipment, it is service purpose. When we create a character for you, we chose swords and axes. Go see if you can find uh, something more appropriate. There's a sword, a wooden sword. This wooden sword is alarming and undeadly. Can you find anything better? Excellent, now equip the wooden sword. Now you just need, to need some armor. Go find something appropriate. This is a traffic cone. It's a poor helmet, but we spent all our money for a patrol on the Iron Mace. You can't use. So, it will have to do. It could put on your head. You're ready to go kill. Now go kill that monster. Well, apparently I've got a pile on my head. It may make a ridiculous hap, but at least you won't be get hit by a car. I'm not so sure about that, but okay. Another Diggle dead. Another tutorial complete. You're making short work fees. Well done. You know what's fun? Killing Diggles. Unfortunately, they're getting craftier. This one has surrounded himself with a body of water, and only one of you is leaving this tutorial alive. Crossbows can be used to shoot monsters from a long way away. You need two things to use a crossbow. A crossbow and some bolts. First, let's look around for some bolts. Now that we have some bolts, we need to find a crossbow. Or you equip bolts or anything in your inventory. Nope, so apparently you just, you just go straight into your, um... Well, let's put it right over here. <coughs> Here's my crossbow. Excellent, now open up your character panel by pressing C, or by clicking on the character button. Let's put this crossbow somewhere. Okay, I think I equipped it. Well, that worked. So how do I attack now? Uh, tutorial. Maybe I use these? Well, that's a bit of a, uh, you know, a letdown. This is your belt bar, crossbow ammunition, from weapons, and wands must be placed here to be used in, um, with a right click. All your items can also be held in your belt for convenient access. Any slot in your belt with an item can be used by pressing shift and then number of the belt slot.
well, that worked pretty well. So, how am I actually supposed to complete this tutorial? Would you believe I failed a tutorial? I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Let's just do this again and see if I can, you know, fix it up a little bit. Alright, so excellent. Now open up your character panel pressing C, or we'll click on the character button. Let's put this crossbow somewhere. The character panel has a slot for crossbows. Pick up the crossbow from your inventory by clicking on it, then place the crossbow in your inventory by placing an equipment slot. To fire bolts, right click on the bolts to equip them. The bolts will appear in a bolt gold square at the bottom of the screen and indicate that they're an active item. Alright, so this is what I'm supposed to do. I don't know why I didn't do it the first time, but whatever. You can now shoot bolts at the diggle by targeting it. With the mouse and pressing right click. There we go. This diggle has surrounded himself with a char charming mode of lava. And we left our crossbow in a previous tutorial. Fortunately, we have explosives. Find a pile of bombs and put them in your belt. Chrome weaponry, bombs, softballs, boomerangs, shurikens, and so forth, operate in the same way as the crossbow bolts do. The main difference is that you don't need a crossbow to use them. Equip the makeshift bomb by right-clicking on, on them in your belt. You can now tell the bomb has been activated by looking at the gold box at the bottom of your screen that represents the current active item. Now, right-click on the diggle bullet in the game come. Well, that was fun. The room next to yours contains a thermal blobby, who will do his best to kill you with his fiery gooey attacks. Before you go in there and deliver a heroic beatdown, you need to find protection. Open the equipment panel by clicking on the character button, or by pressing C. Various types of monsters and spells do various types of damage. You can find magical equipment and skills that will help you resist these effects. Not surprisingly, these are called resistances. Go pick up the Ring of Ash. You will see two slots for rings on your left hand side of your character panel. Equip the Ring of Ash in your equipment screen. You can see that a small fiery circle has appeared in the resistance panel of the character sheet. Equipping a ring has given you two points of conflagratory resistance. This means that you can absorb two points of conflagratory damage before it starts to affect you. And yes, they did really call fire damage conflagratory. For instance, suppose a monster hits you with, uh, for two crushing and two conflagratory damage. With the Ring of Ash equipped, you would only receive the two points of crushing damage. That's a 50% savings. Go kill the Fermin Plotty, show it who's boss. It is important to understand that normal armor only protects against crushing, slashing, and blasting damage. Most monsters do one of these three types of damage, but they may have additional special damage on top of that. Managing your resistances, specifically getting as much as you can, is essential to surviving a dungeon. Ah, potions. Magic liquids, sorcerers, fluids, wizards' juices, whatever you want to call them. They're powerful items that you can find in Dungeons of Dremor and store in your belt in the inventory in case of emergency. Various potions do different things. You may already have encountered the Aqua Rouge in the previous tutorial, but most potions are m more useful than that. Let's start by finding a potion of invisibility. The potion of invisibility makes you invisible. Place it in your belt and right click it to drink it. Excellent! You'll notice an icon has appeared in the left hand corner of the screen. This is an example of a buff. An active ability that makes you stronger or weaker. In this case, it makes you invisible. Note that there's a timer in one corner of the icon. When a timer goes to zero, the effect of the potion wears off. 
In this case, you will return to visibility. Proceed to the second room and kill the Diggle. I got, you know, a silhouette for where my character is. Die. As you may have noticed, invisibility also wears off when you hit a monster. Proceed to the normal chamber where you find a second potion. The Voltec potion imbues your body with electrical energy, granting you resistance to Voltec attacks and shocking your foes with deadly lightning. Right click to drink it. Excellent! Proceed to the third room and kill the Electro Brawly. I blocked it. You're looking pretty beat up with all these battles, hero. Why enjoy a delicious potion heal of healing? Well, there we go. That one's done. Some heroes choose to fight with steel, or when times are tough, weapons of wood and occasionally spaghetti. Others have chosen the cerebral safety art of magic. And this is the subject of today's tutorial. Magic spells are used in the same way as your used combat skills. Magic can summon pets, transport you in and out of danger, and generally make your life better. For instance, consider the giant moat blocking your progress. By using Zulu's trans translation, you can move to the other side of the moat. First, equip the spell by clicking on, on your skill belt. Now, right click on the other side of the moat to teleport and pull the lever to continue the tutorial. And that costs mad to use, so you have to watch out for that. Spells consume mana. The amount of mana consumed is highlighted on the blue map bar and bottom of the screen. To regain mana, you can either wait by hitting space, or you can drink booze. Go find a sewer brew, then place it in your belt and right-click to drink it. Sewer brew is not a high quality form of alcohol. However, every turn that you still have boost in your system, you will regain mana at a faster rate than you would normally. Specifically, one point of mana every turn. The fuel by booze icon indicates how long you will remain refreshed. The next room contains a diggle. As a wizard, you are weak and puny, and will not survive a direct confrontation. Instead, blow him up with your magical powers. First, equip the power of Kinesis skill in your skill belt by clicking on it. Next, blow up the Diggle by right clicking on it with a mouse. Some heroes choose to combine magic and weaponry for potent effects. These wizards are often choose to use spells to make their attacks more powerful. These are called buffs. For instance, the power of magic steel spell from the School of Vikings Magic infuses your weapon with a potent velocity of energies. Click on the power of magic steel spell in your uh, spell belt. Blah blah blah. Now right click to cast. The power of magic steel has now infused your weapon with Vultic energy. This spell stays active for up to 5 attacks, but it also consumes magic as long as it is in effect. If you run out of mana, the spell will dissolve. You also cancel the spell at any, uh, any time by pressing the, the gold X in the buff icon on the left hand of the screen. Now that you're full of lightning, why not take it out on a enraged diggle in the other room? Alright, well, that was all the tutorials for this game. And yes, there's quite a few tutorials and, you know, comic relief that we had in this game. Next time I'll actually jump into the game and we'll see what it's going to be all about, basically playing Dungeons of Dreadmore. But for now, that'll be it for this episode. We'll see how this goes, but for now, take care.